In a recent tweet, Elon Musk said that Teslas on autopilot are 99.999999% safe on the highways. And even when Teslas are involved in very serious accidents, the passengers are generally okay. Safety is an extremely underrated aspect of what makes Tesla so special, and it's only going to get better over time. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I wanted to react to a couple of tweets from Elon Musk yesterday and what it means for us full self-driving owners, etc., and eventually for everyone on the roads. I think it's really, really critical to talk about that. I also want to take a quick tangent into a video that I watched yesterday as well from Syke Williams, and I've asked him for permission to use the video images and so forth. If I get them, I will overlay them on this video. If not, then I'll just put the link to the video in the description, so check it out for sure. It's really amazing the, the images that he has and how little actually happened to them in such a violent collision. But first, let's take a look at these Elon Musk tweets. Elon Musk said, quote, Tesla AI autopilot engineering is awesome, making excellent progress solving real world AI. Then he replied to himself <laughs> saying, major improvements are being made to the vision stack every week. Beta button hopefully next month, which makes me cry by the way. I was really hoping for 420, but that looks like May in that case, and that's very sad. Continuing on, he said, this is a quote march of nines trying to get probability of no injury above 99.999999% of miles for city driving. Production autopilot is already above that for highway driving. And you can actually see that I wrote a little response to that and said it was a mic drop moment, which was what inspired me to do this video in the first place. And for all of us who are waiting for the button to arrive and can't wait for it to happen, we had another tweet from Elon Musk, which made me a little bit sad. Replying to Holmar's blog or Holmar catalog, he said, quote, button timing of May is aspirational, depends on how well limited beta of version 9.0 goes, but I would be surprised if wide beta, aka the button, is later than June. Full self-driving subscription next month is a sure thing. So let's unpack all of this. I'll start with the second tweet because that's a little simpler to understand. So a subscription service is coming out in May. That's a sure thing. So anyone who does not have full self-driving and has a Tesla at this point, you will be able to pay a monthly subscription to get full self-driving on your car, which is a great way to test it because as long as they don't have some sort of contract thing where you have to do it for six months or a year, and you know, maybe they will, maybe if you get it for a year, you get it at a discounted rate, I don't know. But anyway, at the very least, you can pay some amount of money for one month and you can check it out and see if it's a worthy addition to the arsenal and worth the money. So I think that's all to the good. Also, obviously the version 9.0 limited release is coming out, sadly, just to the people apparently who already have the full self-driving beta. I'm so jealous of those people, but it looks like that is going to come out you know, probably within a couple of weeks at a guess, and that then they're hoping that everything goes well and that by the end of May, they will be able to push that out to the general fleet, which is going to be a major, major step because it doesn't seem like what they're doing is they're going like limited release, a little bit bigger release, a little bit bigger release. It seems like what they're doing is going limited release and then boom, everybody. So that's pretty amazing. They're willing to take that step. And of course, at the end of that tweet, he said he would be surprised if the button was not available by June. So, <laughs> so, you know, given Elon time in the past, it's always been like, well, June is next year or something, right? But I think now he's, he's sandbagging a little bit, although he did say May was aspirational. So let's just say July 1st instead of getting it back in April, which I was really, really hoping to get. It's sad. I'll, anyway, I'll survive. <laughs> What's a couple more months at this point when we've all been waiting this long for it? So anyway, let's look at that first set of tweets now. Obviously, Elon Musk is very impressed with their AI team because he says they're making excellent progress on solving a real-world AI problem. In fact, one of the most complicated real-world AI problems, at least in terms of the societal impact that it could eventually have. But the important part here is the, the number that he pulls out, the March of Nines, and he's saying no injury. So it's not no accident, but it's no injury. So I guess a fender bender doesn't count in this case. So, you know, he's, he's playing a little bit, but he does say that in terms of injuries, it's 99.9. 999999% no accidents that cause injuries, so no serious accidents. 
So what does that mean in terms of real world use? Well, a 99% on a chemistry exam is fantastic, right? You would probably be like, oh, thank God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he studied really hard and you got a great grade. But 99% in terms of driving would be terrible. That means you would have statistically one accident every 100 miles. So I would never leave the house in a car if it was like that, right? So what we have to do is start adding up all of those nines. And if we do, so 99% would be one accident every 100 miles. And then you add all those other significant digits, which is six. So that makes it 100 million miles. So statistically, autopilot, the, and I don't know whether this is the beta version or whether this is the current version, because the current version works very, very well on the highway. But he's basically saying that, assuming this is also the current version plus the beta version, because as far as I understand from other tweets from Elon Musk, there have not been any accidents with the new full self-driving beta. Now that could be no serious accidents, maybe there were fender benders or something, but anyway, no serious accidents with the beta. So let's just assume that we're talking about the widely released version that most people have now, and they have a huge amount of statistics, probably you know tens of billions of miles on the highway. What he's saying is that on average, the full self-driving, if it's in autonomous driving mode, it's 100 million miles between accidents. And you can drive your entire life without driving 100 million miles. In fact, I expect you probably will drive your entire life without driving 100 million miles. So that means with this software, enabled, you can pretty much drive your entire life without expecting to get into an accident. And that's with other human drivers on the road. Things are only going to get safer, right? If you imagined everybody had, it's magically you could wave your wand and everybody had full self-driving enabled and they were driving on the highway, the roads would be exceptionally safe because all of the cars would be handling things at a superhuman level. So that would mean that we you know, we'd add a whole bunch more nines to that. And, you know, you could probably drive a billion plus miles, uh, you know, or 10 billion or 100 billion miles without expectation of an accident. Now, could an accident never happen? No, this is this is the kind of thing where it will never, ever, ever be 100% sure. That's just the way life is. Something crazy could happen. A tree could fall on you, right? So you get in an accident. It's not your fault. The tree just fell down as you were driving by on the road. So there can always be bizarre circumstances where accidents can happen. But the more nines there are, are in that process, the more distance you're going to drive before you encounter something like that. So clearly what they're looking at is trying to get city driving up to the level of highway driving. So they feel like if you can go 10 million or 100 million miles in city driving without getting into an accident, they feel like that is a reasonable number. And, and I do too, quite frankly, because city driving... Because it's slower speeds, you won't drive as many miles in the city as you will on the highways, obviously. So, you know, so, but city is much, much more challenging in terms of the nature of the driving. There's traffic lights, there's stop and go traffic, there's people pulling in and out of parking lots, there's pedestrians. There's all sorts of things which make city driving way, way, way more complicated than driving on the highway, which is why it's a much, much tougher ask to get up to those 99.99, etc percent um, safety records in city driving versus highway driving. So anyway, I think it's fantastic. I think that these numbers are kind of mind boggling. And like I said in my reply, it's a mic drop moment. These, these numbers are astounding. They are way better than human drivers. I'm trying to remember, I think on the highway, oh gosh, I'll have to get the statistic, but it's somewhere like a million or a million and a half miles before an accident. So we're talking about several nines less, right? So let's just say it's one million to round it off. That means we have to take away two of those zeros. So that means human being drivers are on the highway are 99.9999% safe. And so we've got two orders of magnitude more safety in full self-driving than in human drivers. So that, I was gonna talk about the consequences for the future and a major consequence for the future is that human beings are going to be taken out of the loop at some point. There is no way that humans are going to be able to be allowed to continue driving on highways and probably at first on highways in that sort of situation because those accidents when they happen are, there's a much higher potentiality for fatalities, right? Because you're going much faster and the consequences are much more huge. It can definitely happen in the city as well. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong here, but I think that it will probably happen on highways first because it's also a simpler thing for full self-driving computers to handle. But anyway, there's going to come a time when people have access to full self-driving computers, and that will take a while, right? Because all the cars, all the old cars have to go away, and all the new cars with full self-driving capabilities have to get on the road. But of course, eventually we're going to get to robo-taxis and everything anyway, so you won't necessarily have to buy a new car. You can just order up a robo-taxi that will automatically be driving in a safe mode. But anyway, I think that a definite consequence of this by 
let's really throw it out there by 2040, it might happen well before that, is that human beings will not be allowed to drive on the roads anymore. Uh, unless they have some sort of magical permit or something. So we're going to be taken out of the loop because we're going to be super dangerous and it's going to be way safer to have computers driving for us. In the meantime, of course, we have to deal with this weird heterogeneous situation where we've got robo, you know, full self-driving computer cars on the road with humans, which is a much less safe situation. If all cars were autonomous, they would drive much more safely because they would all behave in a much more predictable manner. And probably eventually they'll communicate with each other and say like, oh, a traffic accident is coming up ahead or a tree fell down on the road, so you better slow down. So you don't have those kinds of things that, that cause really bad accidents, which is there's like an accident on a highway and everyone's doing 75 miles an hour and all of a sudden they have to come to a dead stop and so the first accident that happens often is not the worst one it's the ones that pile up behind it and just smash you know everybody smashes into each other and you get those hundred car pileups that are just horrific so speaking of that, let's talk about this accident that Psych Williams and his wife got into. I'm not going to get into, I, you know, I wasn't there, so I, <laughs> I'm certainly not going to talk about who's at fault or anything, but what I understand is that they were in the fast lane, so that would have been the far left lane where they were driving, and they were doing about 75, and a truck, you know, big object, squished them into one of those concrete medians, and then they, they ping-pong back and forth between the median and the truck, at very high speeds and eventually went off onto the grass median strip between you know the two directions of traffic. So if I can show some pictures, you'll see how horrific this was. And the car was completely demolished. Um, the, the, the passenger side door, Syke was on the, pa he was the passenger, so he was on the passenger side. And the passenger side door was completely gone. The, the roof part, which was all the glass and everything, was completely smashed in. The front was smashed. The front kind of looks like a triangle more than anything else. It just was demolished. But the amazing part about this is that his wife walked away without apparently any injuries, and he has some injury, like ligament injuries, to his right leg. But under the circumstances, considering that the right side of the car is basically missing, it's miraculous that he was alive. And, and by the by, my, my parents always talked about this, so I remembered it. They always called the passenger seat the death seat, the front passenger seat, because um, so in a you know, right-hand driving uh, country with a person driving on the left of the car, what happens is it's a human being. If you imagine, like, think about somebody... I don't know, they flick something in front of your eyes and you just automatically do this, right? You just have this natural reaction to protect yourself. And that's what happens in an accident is that if something is coming at you from the right, you will swerve out of the way. Just, just, it's not your fault, you know? It's not like you have any conscious control over this. You'll just move out of the way, and so you'll steer the, the car away from you to protect yourself. But what that does is that puts the passenger in greater danger because if something is coming from that direction, they're going to broadside that person. So, you know, sometimes, like, logically, it would be better if you steered straight or into it or something, but that's just not what human beings can do. Uh, again, this is where a full self-driving autonomous car could be better because I could see these cars having preemptive strategies to mitigate the severity of a collision if they ever are, you know, if they ever have to be in one. So they wouldn't have the same restrictions that a human being would in terms of instinct and doing things that aren't necessarily the best in an accident. But anyway, that's, you know, regardless, it's nobody's fault because we can't help our lizard brains because they do what they want to do. But anyway, so he was in a seat under the circumstances that in many cars probably would have killed him, and he certainly could have been injured very, very severely. So the fact that Teslas have, and by the way, the glass roof, he said specifically the front windshield and the glass roof and everything did not shatter and cause glass to rain down on them or cause any injuries like that. So that's great, because I have worried about that. I love our glass roof, and I think it's amazing, but I'm like, oh my gosh, if we got in an accident, wouldn't that thing just go, right? But apparently the glass that they are using, the laminated glass, is very, very effective at not, you know, shattering or causing extra injuries. So that's super, super good to know. But anyway, the upshot of this is that that five-star safety rating that Tesla brags about, and that people don't pay as much attention to as I think they should, is incredible. That is a very, very important aspect of what makes a Tesla so special. Uh, you know, having, having something where you can get away from an accident that's completely totals the car, removes the portion of the car on your side of it, and yet you're okay, uh, you know, some leg injuries, and that's, you know, that's bad, and I hope he recovers very quickly, but holy crap, it could have been way worse, right? So I think it's, it's really important to understand how important this safety thing is, because hopefully, you know, 
we'll never get in an accident, but if we do, and statistically people will get in accidents, if you can be safer, if you can walk away from it or not be injured very badly, that's worth all the money in the world, right? As opposed to being in the hospital for months or God forbid, you know, dying from the accident. The being much safer under those circumstances is worth everything. So anyway, there we have it. Sadly enough, it looks like the full self-driving, the button, is not going to be out. I will, now I'll push it back to like the end of June or July 1st or something like that. It makes me sad because I was really looking forward to 420. <laughs> but anyway, so it is going to come out and hopefully it'll come out this summer if Elon Musk is accurate about that. And of course, the people in the limited beta release are going to get it sooner, so we'll find out how much of a step change it is from watching their videos. So I'm hoping it's the, everything that he talks about and it's just that good. And so in the future, this means that people who are using the full self-driving computer will be able to drive in an incredibly safe manner, probably safer than they themselves can drive their cars. And that's amazing. And that means that human beings eventually are not going to be allowed to drive cars, or it's just going to be so expensive from an insurance standpoint that nobody's going to be able to afford it. And in the meantime, if you do get into a severe accident in a Tesla, you can be guaranteed that it's going to be about as safe as it possibly could be, considering that you're hurtling down the highway at high speeds, you know, <laughs> in a metal death trap. Under those circumstances, given all of that, Teslas are about as safe as you can get. And that is a hugely important thing for me, for my family. It makes me feel so much better about driving this car. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and informative. If you did, definitely like it so other people can find it because that's how YouTube's AI algorithm works. And please do subscribe to see more of this. And on the Twitter front, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's Dr. Know it All 16 on Twitter, or you can look in the description or just search Dr. Know it All and look for the little glasses logo. So follow me. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You all are wonderful. Thank you all so much for your support. It's been a while since I've done a new Patreon patron shout out, so I have a few people to add this time. We have Charlie Caney, R. Smith, Lurker239, and Tyler Wittreich. I hope that's the correct pronunciation for it. I guess it depends on whether you're from the US or from Germany. Anyway, thank you all so much for your support. And of course, if you want to join in on the fun, check out the link in the description. Also, don't forget about our merch store. You can check out Don't Mess With Tesla, All Input Is Error, the Tesla Autobot, and other t-shirts and mugs and tumblers, etc., etc. And finally, don't forget we are both Amazon and Tesla affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking on a link and going shopping helps out the channel. Thank you. And as always, don't forget to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye. <laughs>